Good morning, traders. Welcome to the TMT Traders Edge Report for Thursday, December 14th. Well, the Fed has spoken. Yesterday, they raised rates 25 basis points, kind of baked into the market. Fed fund futures, we're talking about a minimum of 100%. Uh, increase so um, and, and that's exactly what happened and the markets actually still rallied from that we are up right now or a pretty about two handles in the ES so the markets continue to grind higher uh, on on a reduction on balance sheet well we got here almost 10 years of a bull market run of an increase in their balance sheet now they're reducing but remember it's not what they what the numbers are it's what they say and uh, uh, if the markets feel like it's going to be a slow grind of, uh, of taking taking money liquidity away from their balance sheet then it's not going to matter keep buying the market and that's what everybody wants to believe and that's what they want to believe so what happens markets continue to move higher well it's unsustainable when a market runs up uh, let's just even take from here from uh, early November which is not even a, a month we've been pretty much rallying in the spiders probably about uh, oh, let's say maybe 50 60 points a month and the es 100 s p points in the es futures contract pretty much every month so um and, and i don't mean every month exact but it, once they break the um 2500 or a milestone 23 24 they rally immediately run up 100 points so it's unsustainable when the when es was rallying maybe 20 points a month 30 points a month you just can't get that uh and what's happening is and uh, I'm, uh, by the way uh, thanks a lot for the emails i love the emails keep bringing them on um you can't have that kind of uh, pull from the rubber band from the ground floor to, you know, let's say, a hundred floor. It's going to snap. Uh, but what do you do? Well, as far as having the edge for the day, you have to continue to buy the pullback. I understand that it's not, um, you know, um, I know I wouldn't, but I'm, that's what I'm doing. I continue to buy the pullback into a, uh, one of our value areas here in our TMT Algo uh, value areas, which I'm showing you off the daily. Uh, we have the intraday charts that we show you uh, levels where we actionable where you can trade off of. So that's what I'm doing. I'm looking to buy pullbacks into um, areas of support. And if that fails or we get a, a reversal intraday, then I'll be selling rallies. It's quite simple. Uh, but until then, do not, no reason to fight the trend. Uh, the trend is your friend. And unfortunately, as much as I want to pull back so I can start loading up into some uh, stocks, uh, and of course, uh, different asset classes of uh, commodities. I, I just refuse to buy something that's up here this elevated. And uh, we talked about um, the, the Dow Jones, which is just insane. I mean, I, I don't see how anybody's doing it. But what's happening is, and it's so true, the um, if you go into Wall Street data uh, market center and you'll see sell on strength, buy on weakness. You'll see every once in a while you'll see spiders be, uh, get on there. And you'll see 1.5 billion for the day, 1.8 billion the next day. So they're selling into strength where what's happening? The algos and the retail are buying. But what happens, the algos tip out of the market at 4 o'clock and the retail are accumulating stocks up here. So passive investing has been its, its greatest in probably all time in history since it's been recording. That's not a good sign because why? The retail don't do not know how to get out of their stock they just continue to buy and if the market breaks down and breaks down and breaks down they'll keep buying because they think that oh the market can never go down when the, when all of a sudden they get a margin call at the lows it's over the account's blown up again and that's going to be for the third time remember 2000 2009 and now it's going to happen it's inevitable all right so what happens there they're totally out of the market Okay, so you got the baby boomers that are totally gone. Three strikes, you're out. I lost all my money three times, got it back to uh, slightly higher, and now it's over. So they're going to be out of the market at one point because they're going to be totally wiped out. And at the age that they're in, they're not going to be able to reinvest in the market because they can't afford it. There's too much risk involved. And that's not, it's going to be a big damper on the, on the equity markets at one point. And yeah, the algos will continue to buy and the HFTs will continue to buy, but wait, wait till they turn around and sell. Everybody's going to be up in arms with that. So, uh, again, this is just conversation, but I want you guys to be aware of what's going on and what could possibly happen. All right. Remember, I don't, I don't, I don't care how who's behind the uh, the Fed or whatever. I've seen this 30 years doing this. The markets eventually will come down and will come down in a big way. And I believe will come harder, will fall harder because the higher it climbs on very little volume. Here, you could see this. This is very little volume all year long. And we had this big move up. We had even lighter volume on this last seven, eight days up, and we're up again. So fast forward. Let's see if the Fed uh, throws cold water onto this rally. 
Uh, sometimes you get a market that goes up, and the next day we get a reversal. But we are into options monthly expiration. I don't think that is going to happen. You might get a little bit of sell-off, some weakness. That's going to create an intraday buying opportunity for me. If the buying fails, right, if you buy on the dip and it fails, and we start to roll over, then it's time to start looking to sell rallies, okay? And it's that simple. If you're not fast enough to do so, just step off to the market and let, let the market digest, do its thing, and while you're watching and learning, okay? Spiders here, 264.30, and then we got the 21 EMA at 262, um, 262.35. This swing low, pivot low, is really important. I like it coincides nicely with the 21 EMA here of the 262.89. If, but don't forget, I mean, you. You have six days up, but look at the candles, how small they are. One down candle could wipe the whole six-day move, and, and, and it could get violent. So just be careful when you do buy that dip. But, yeah, I would buy that dip here. At least try that. There are intraday levels um, that we provide for our daily strategy videos and our portrait of Premier videos as well. Now, I want to talk about um, Amazon. And we give you the trader's edge for the day because we like to look for something, look for edges for you guys to trade off of, okay? And if it's not today, you need to put this on your watch list because I'm going to provide a lot for you. Morgan Stanley came out from my, a lot of uh, my intraday sources uh, are telling me that Morgan Stanley's uh, subprime metrics are, um, are very weak. They're soft for the prime members. Okay, so the trend, their trending is, is trending weaker than expected. Now, let's talk quickly about the FANG stocks. The FANG stocks, to me, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, are topping. And, and the trade of the year has been buy a basket of FANG stocks and sell volatility, meaning sell the VIX or the VIX products such as the VXX, UVXY, what have you. Uh, and that's been their trade of the year. Why? Because you get a basket of FANG stocks that are, correlate, that are highly correlated with many other ETFs uh, in the market. You, it's easy, very easy to push the market higher. Okay. Well, this uh, you could take a look at it every stock of the FANG stocks, and they're, to me, are topping. Now, that's not a good sign for Morgan Stanley. Morgan Stanley's coming out with some negative, uh, uh, negative picture today. Keep an eye on Amazon. Uh, there are some big intraday levels, but off the bigger picture here, if you, let me grab uh, my crosshair, if you can see that number here of uh, 1225.43 is going to play a big role. Uh, if at all anything, we roll down to the 50 and then ultimately touch the top of this gap area of support, which will fill the gap at one point. And I do believe, I'm a big firm believer of gaps. I love to play gaps. Gap fills are very important to the market and to the marketplace. It recycles and it readjusts and realigns uh, the stock. So I do think that you'll get a gap fill here at one point. Um, but keep an eye on Amazon. Morgan Stanley come out negative, could hit the stock a little bit. You have to pick your intraday levels, uh, but this is a stock that I like that I'm watching today for a short play. Now, let's go into. Um, uh, uh, our CF trade that we called from yesterday. Uh, there were a couple of guys that asked me, uh, some of you guys made some good money. Uh, CF was up 66 cents yesterday. Now, remember, the call is not to buy CF here when you have an uptrend line, at uh, tipping at the uptrend line. If you broke out of the uptrend line, but there are some resistance areas, right? Remember, CF got hammered here, right? Got clobbered. If you look back, way back here, see if CF fell for about a year, all of 2016, and now trying to recover. All right, now, um, their model, something, their model is uh, uh, coming out. They're changing their ways, and uh, they've they've been doing really well by re by their recovery. I don't believe that CF will go back to where it was anytime soon. However, for a trade, I like the strength in it. I like the volume in it. I like the fact that MACD, excuse me, RSI is making higher highs and higher lows. We're starting to get a little bit stretched now. Okay, so for the for those of you who are um, really quick. And, uh, and have that experience that you can trade this on the short side, do so, do as you see fit. Why? There is resistance here, and we're coming into resistance in here. Uh, now, <clears throat> the better play for me would be to look for uh, right here, this cluster area, 3532, which comes in right around the 38% retracement. If you look at, when you're doing Fibonacci work, you, you want to make sure that all the lines actually are, are pretty much lined up to where price is. And you get that cluster here. This is perfect, 38%. Look at, look at how much... Um, movement that we had here, the 38% retracement. So that's going to be a big actionable area for me. 61.8%. Look at that. Perfect. Lines up with our algo support of 32.30. So these areas here, these three areas, 32.30, 35, 37, uh, I don't even think it would get that far. But if you, if you get a market meltdown at one point, guys, then all bets are off to the upside. Okay. This is for a trade. 
Um, some of you did take that in an intraday day, you made money. Not that this can't go up, this has some good strength to it, and I like it for a trade, maybe one, two, three days, but look for, uh, look for a move lower in, uh, in CF, as far as for a pullback, I should say, to look to re-enter, okay? Now, this has some strength, so you can play this on an intraday move, uh, looking for bases, and then starting to uh, look for a breakout above, okay? But this is something I like so far, uh, we continue to like, and remember, here at TMT, we're trend traders, so we do follow what the trend is, but overall picture is bleak, overall picture is bearish, and there's not a problem dollar cost averaging into a short side if you have a lot of money and you know what you're doing. All right, guys, uh, thanks again for the Trader's Edge Report. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care.